So what have a Jaguar XJR and a Cadillac Eldorado got in common? Well, they're just two of the lots here at the SWVA Spring Sale, which takes place on the 25th of April. Their palatious new headquarters can play host to viewing from the 20th of April, and all the details of the lots are online, and we'll put that in the description. So Paul and I are gonna have a little wander around and see some of the highlights. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So check the video description for full details and to enter. OK, Paul, now our former editor of Fast Forward, you'd normally be all over a Fiesta XR2, but what about one of its competitors? A 1989 Vauxhall Nova GTE. Well, when did you last see a Nova GTE? I mean, there's like, apparently there's something like 46 on the road, but how many standard GTEs are left on the road? Probably one, and it's right here. Yeah, and two owners, totally 88,000 miles warranted, loads of paperwork to it, and a, a guide price of seven to nine. I mean, an equivalent XR2 or maybe even an RS Turbo would be, what, two, three times the price? Yeah, so. probably, yeah. And I mean, this one is its really straight, actually, just looking at it, the paintwork's lovely. I don't know how much work it's had, but it doesn't matter, does it? It, it? it looks really good and straight. And as I say, completely standard. I mean, yeah, I really like this. I mean, so many have had, had big engines put in and the, the bodywork's been messed with, but... Um, I mean, back in the day, the, the Fiesta was the best-selling one. The 205 GTO was the one that everyone wanted. This was, for me, the bit of an underdog. And yeah. That's all the more appealing. There as are quick cars concerned. these, though, still. I mean, you'd still have fun driving this, every, uh, you know, to, even today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Collect and keep that one, for sure. But uh, anyway, we've been... Um, lovely little story with this Lotus Europa here, 1971. Uh, the guy that's selling it has had it for 20 years. And uh, he's the, the ripe the ripe young age of 90 now. And well, probably he looking bought to... it as a 70th present. I mean, what, a, what a 70th birthday present. I mean, you just get the sense of the character that would have uh, used and enjoyed this car. But it's, uh, it's got a tuned up Vauxhall engine. Um, and uh, I just think it's... It's, it's, it's essentially built to race spec, isn't it? I mean, it's a yeah. serious piece of kit, actually. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Another sort of um, British beast here, Rover ST1, 1982 V8. Um, this one's actually had a 3.9 lump put in it. Yeah, it's an SE, isn't it, as well? It's not a Vitesse, but it's, yeah, as you say, it's got a, a Range Rover lump. Yeah, it? subtly sort of uh, modded. It's got some non-standard wheels on it and a non-standard three-spoke steering wheel, but they're just so rare now. And actually, the condition of this one is, is actually pretty decent. Yeah, it's I nice, say, actually, isn't so. it? I mean, you can get all the parts for these as well, body panels and everything. Well, yeah, you can. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, very much a usable classic. I do like and, this, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> manual as well. So, yeah. you know, a bit more uh, desirable if you really want to get a get a move on so um, fantastic I would say let's just head for a bit further down because there's another well for me this is the star of the show and it's lovely resplendent Sundance yellow yeah you just don't see them around obviously again super rare everyone restored the Fords but not not the Avenger yeah so this the current owner's had it since 2021 when he fully recommissioned it it's got 44,000 miles showing on the clock we're not entirely sure uh, that that's sort of backed up but it's got plenty of paperwork uh, the condition is absolutely immaculate. We did a road test on the Avenger, and I've always had a soft spot for them. Um, but this obviously being the sort of the halo car, uh, it's even more special. And, uh, it's got just, the Dunlop alloys. Yeah, I just, just think it's absolutely stunning. I really do. I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I'll tell you how rare these are. It's been something like 10 years. Every time we have a, a feature in one of our print publications, we need a picture of an Avenger. We've been using the same set of pictures that I did 10 <laughs> years ago. Uh, and this, this is the, the only one I've seen since, basically, that was uh, is worth photographing. So we're going to get this out and do some pictures. Well, I think we should get some more photos, absolutely. Look, well, let's just have a wander over here. There's some more curiosities here. OK, Paul, I don't know if you were a Group B rally fan in the early 80s. But it wasn't. Audi Quattro UR here. I mean, again, super rare. This is part of a uh, bigger collection that's going through the auction uh, in April and uh, well what a what a stunning example also been made up to look like a proper rally style with all yeah. its decals and everything I don't know I'm, I, I'm conflicted about this it's actually painted on so you know it, it can't just be peeled off but I mean it is it is pretty authentic I think it's the, it's the proper livery that they used back in the day um, there's an 82 10 Valvo Quattro and you know that's a lively car I mean a nice one to, to, to actually use um, you know not, not many of the earlier cars left either it's been in a collection for a good number of years, so it's been recently recommissioned, new star mode and everything to get it up and running, uh, and a guide price of 30 to 35. So, um, yeah, a real uh, piece yeah. of automotive history a Apart here. from the paint, it's nice and standard. It's got the original four-spoke wheel and everything. Yeah. No, it's absolutely lovely. Probably a bit more bread and buttery for me, but <laughs> more my kind of thing here. Fairly late Ford Sierra Sapphire here. This is on a yeah. 92, and, of course, the Mondeo came out... Gear uh, spec? ...less than a year later. Yeah, this is a gear spec. It's got lovely leather... 
um, armchairs in there. It's got the four-speed auto. It's Automatic, got, yeah. It's got the two-liter I4 double overhead camshaft, so not the Pinto unit. So the more modern engine. Yeah. And uh, sensible guide on this. You know, we know this sort of 80s and 90s Ford stuff is really climbing in value. So if you want a kind of mint original car, you can't go, uh, can't go far wrong. This is mint. I'll tell you what, holy grail of Sierra ownership. The dash isn't cracked. Yes. Yes, well, this being a facelift one, the, the trim was slightly better quality, yeah, it was, but yeah. uh, it's lasted well. And that leather, as I say, is absolutely... Uh, These late ones with the I4 it. motor, they, they drive quite differently from early Sierras, and they're, they're all right. They're really yeah, right. yeah, no, absolutely. Well, look, there's a similar family car just back here, a Volvo Amazon Estate. It's a 122S, isn't it? Yes. So it's, it's the performance model. Now, this is absolutely lovely, I think. Um, this is... Um, it's nice and straight. I yeah, think. this has yeah. been used daily. Uh, it's been kept in immaculate condition. It's looking like it's running on some non-standard wheels. Yeah, it's got some slight, it's uh, nice. It's got like wide steels on it, which is really nice. But the originals are in the boot, we think. Exactly. But, We've got about you know, 85 horsepower in these, twin carb. And they made a good, good few of these, 70 odd thousand, I think, in the production life of the uh, Amazon estate in particular. But this, um, you know, these are they're now super rare. But, yeah. um, but this is a, as good a condition this as you'll ever find. It's a good car to use this every day. I mean, this was the first car with um, seatbelts as standard, really. And, um, you know, you... You're nice and safe in these. Um, yeah. They've got a decent turn of speed. They drive like a, a more modern car, actually. Really solid, usable example. Yeah. Listen, I don't know how you are on your um, Americana stuff. <sighs> Not the best. Cadillac Eldorado. This is a 1984 example. It was imported uh, over to the UK in about 2010. Um, they actually only made the Eldorado convertible for about a year. This is kind of one of the last of the line of the 10th generation. I think yeah. the 11th generation came out in about 85. And it was an official Cadillac conversion done by the American Sunroof Company on all accounts. Uh, slightly bigger sunroof than perhaps they're used to, but I don't know. I, as a, someone who used to gr grew up on American cop shows, I think this has got an appeal this, to me. This says boss hog to me. Yeah, well, this is what I mean. It's just got that kind of... They're, uh, they're a lunatic engineering concept really because they're front wheel drive V8, aren't they? It's just They're insane, nuts. isn't it? But, uh, you know, who doesn't love sort of white vinyl buttoned, maybe it's leather, buttoned interior though? It's, uh, yes, it's got loads of character. The uh, owner is a huge enthusiast. He spent loads of money on it, keeping it in fine fettle. And uh, I don't know, if you wanted something to stand out on the uh, classic car show field, I think you could do uh, a lot worse. Well, a lot of this sort of American Americana in, in the British market is often a bit tatty, and, and this one isn't. It's only done like 20,000. and it's Well, I think they only made really 3,300 in total. Yeah. So this is as rare as it comes, yeah, particularly after, in the UK. It, it, it's nice. But listen, there's a Vans and Plas over here. Yeah. Uh, the Princess with the BMC Rolls-Royce aluminium. The four litre R, yes. Four litre engine uh, under the bonnet. Like a massive Austin Cambridge. I mean, these, these, were, uh, these were priced at just under £2,000 when they were new, which was significantly cheaper than a Rolls or a Silver Cloud. Yeah, it was just under a crucial company car tax. That's exactly threshold. right, yeah. yes. And uh, a little bit cheaper than the uh, Jaguar Mark 10 that it was probably up against. But um, yeah, I just really like these. I think they've got a, a sort of a grace, an understated elegance that you, you probably just makes it for me a little cut above an equivalent um, Jaguar or yes. you know, even a Rolls Royce. Well, these, these, this is unusual in, in that the values of these for ages weren't, just weren't high enough for people to spend the extensive cost of restoring them. And um, so, you know, to find one in this decent condition is unusual because, as I say, people just didn't bother restoring them and, and they, you know, they declined in number so massively. It's got a decent service history uh, and sort of um, owner books. Uh, it's won awards at shows. Yeah. So, you know, this is clearly a loved and cared for example. So, yeah, it's um, got a lovely interior. I mean, it might need a little bit of veneer on just on one door, and that's all. I mean, it, it's, um, it's unusually spick and span. You know, that's, that's, that's your argument about whether you keep it with the original patina or you actually restore that kind yeah, of stuff, right? Because yeah. this is, again, a nice, usable car. You Clutching at straws, it really is. In, it's enjoy fine. in the summer, you know. But uh, let's head to the front because there's, uh, there's a few more up here we need to have a look at. So, Paul, this is one of the very usable generation XK, 1958 XK150 fixed head. Yeah. Really lovely example, this yeah. one. If you, uh, want, if you want a Jaguar of this era and you, you want to actually drive it in modern traffic, the 150 is the one to have, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bereavement sale and the, uh, the, the, the um, owner had it comprehensively restored, nut yeah, and bolt was, restoration. Yeah, it was a basket case, wasn't it, when he got it? So yeah, it's and it's, uh, it's absolutely delightful. And these are, I mean, obviously an old car now, but these are really usable on the yeah. road. Lots of people go touring in these cars. Well, this is an SE, uh, so it's, what, 210 horsepower with the, the twin SUs, um, 3.4, isn't it? So it's... Um, 
Yeah, usable and, car. And, you know, a, a guide price that's very realistic in today's market. I mean, yeah. they, these, these peaked a few years ago, yeah, I think. Yeah, they've come and, down, haven't they? And they've, they've, they've softened in value. But make no mistake, this is still a uh, hugely desirable... 55 to 60. I mean, classic. You know, if you had to choose between this and a, an E-Type, I don't know. The E-Type you get for this money probably wouldn't be as nice, would it? And these I are lovely. I yeah. do think so, yeah. I think you're right. I think better, uh, better value than a Series 1 E-Type, yeah. for sure. A bit less obvious as well, isn't it? But listen, if restrained British elegance isn't your bag, how about some... Larry, yellow Italian exotica. Well, I do like my Italian cars, and you know, who doesn't love a Ferrari? This one's an American spec, actually. It's California import, isn't it? Yeah, but it has the paperwork, F1 though, shift. from when it, was, uh, when it was over there. Uh, so yeah. it's obviously a left hand drive. Yeah. But, you know, a very affordable yeah. 355. I think the timing belt's been done about 800 miles yeah. ago. So, uh, you know, maintenance wise, it wants for nothing. If you're not frightened off by the F1 automatic shift, then yeah, I mean, the yellow is so much nicer than the red, I reckon. Because, you know, red Ferrari is just too obvious, isn't it? Only 25,000 miles on the clock, backed up with paperwork. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I always quite like them in yellow, personally. Yeah, I'm I do. A bit, yeah, bit yeah. less obvious than the uh, traditional Ferrari red. But, uh, but listen, f instead of Ferrari, how about some Ford action? And uh, do, do like this. This is a 2000E, 1975, so the Mark III, proper halo car. Bit of, bit of story with this one, because this was featured on uh, Johnny Smith's Late Break Show yeah, YouTube barn channel as a barn find. And it's then since been very sympathetically recommissioned. And uh, my word, this is, you know, obviously we ran a Mark III, but nothing like this um, Well, this, this one's reckoned to be pretty rare, isn't it? It's a, a special order black. Um, you, you couldn't order the 2000E in the triple black. So it's uh, black roof, black bodywork, black interior. I just, I think it's stunning. If I had the money, this, nice, yeah. this, this would be definitely yeah. a bit of me. So, Cortina's uh, not really my thing. The last one I had was a Mark IV. <laughs> but I this does look... Great, I, I just think these are great, but uh, but anyway, of course, Ford did have a V4 engine which they lent to this company here, yeah. Saab. Well, they gave up on the two stroke, didn't they? And they, they went to Ford, and um, yeah, we were just debating amongst ourselves whether it's a 1500 or a 1700. Mm. Phil won that one, it is indeed a 1500. 1500 V4 engine. I've, I've never driven a 96, but uh, this is back in the day when Saab were probably maximum quirkiness like you say yeah, many, yeah. minus the two-stroke engine yeah but. i've only ever driven the two-stroke ones but um they're, they're an acquired taste so you know if you're going to buy one to use again the v4 is probably the one to get this one isn't perfect is it it's um a bit rough around the edges no but it it's, needs um, it needs usable. a bit of a uh, bit of tlc but again the guide price reflects that so i think that's uh yeah entirely sensible i mean what is it 1500 to two and a half that that's an affordable starter classic isn't it and it is unusual yeah and I, and I think you know i think the owners clubs really get behind stuff like this i think you know yeah. you, you will get support to uh, bring this I back think to life. I think support for these is better than for the, for the later Saabs, actually. Yeah, yeah. no, Column shift and everything with this. It's there is a Saab 900 Turbo also in the sale if you want something a little bit later. Um, yeah. And we perhaps are going to go and see that a little bit later but on. If, um, but if a 96 isn't quirky enough for you, do you even know what this is, anyone? <laughs> well, it's definitely not an Austin Healey 3000, no. which it is trying to look like. It's sort of BMW and sort of Austin Healey. A Sebring MX, right? Yeah, it's a, basically a kit car. It's got like a ladder style chassis. This one, I mean, they, they built them with all sorts of engines. This one's got an E46 BMW engine. It's a 330i M54, so 230 horsepower or so. Um, it's got a, a aftermarket management actually on it, so it's probably more than that. Um, yeah. I mean, a lovely it's engine. It's, it's, it's got a BMW gear lever in the middle there, but yeah. the rest of the um, door handles and stalks look like they're straight out of a yeah, sort of that's a Ford, Ford. column stalk, uh, yeah. Ford steering column. Exactly, that's what <laughs> um, I mean. So it's got yeah. some Ford switch BMW gear. handbrake. Uh, but uh, but some BMW uh, ephemera instead. So yeah, um, um, yeah, a bit of curiosity this one. I mean, I bet it drives brilliantly actually. I mean, they, they did make these, uh, or people made these with um, with huge engines. Um, so the three thirty engine is probably quite mild by. Well, by it's a it's, it it's a lovely engine under the bonnet, and you know, if you wanted something that maybe sort of has the same sort of uh, gruff intentions of an Austin Healey 3000, but without the sort of uh, the classic idiosyncrasies, then maybe this is the way yeah, to go. Yeah, I think they, they were reputed to be quite a high quality kit. Um, and certainly the, the fiberglass looks quite, quite smooth and yeah, straight. Yeah, so, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite decent. Now I want to look at this Daimler Sovereign over here with the um, opalescent sort of blue. It looks absolutely gorgeous, this one. Um, it's, got, it's got a bit of paperwork with it. So this um, is basically a Daimler badged Jag 420, isn't it? Yes, exactly right. So it's got the 4.2 XK engine in it. Now, the reason I wanted to pick this out is not only is it is in a lovely condition, but Series 1 XJ6 prices are through yeah. the roof now. Yeah. This has got a guide price of 7.5 to 8.5, and, and yet this is arguably 9 tenths of a Series 1 I've always XJ. thought these were something of a best kept secret in the Jaguar yes. world because they're much more affordable than a 3.8 Mark II. Yeah. And they're now more affordable than a Series 1 XJ, aren't they? But yeah. they, they combine the best of the, the classic 
uh, with the with the um, with the first of the XJs. You know that. They're really, uh, they're a nice car to drive. Yeah, well, there's been loads of work done on this car, still potential to improve it further. But as you say, for this era of Jaguar slash Daimler, I think this is very well worth, uh, well worth considering. So um, we'll keep wandering up the end here because there's still a few more I wanted to point out. It's a Fiat 500L here. I don't know too much about that. 1971, seven to eight guide price on that one. Affordable midget. Yep, yeah. yeah, there's a couple of uh, MG midgets in the sale, actually. This is a really nice, Example, this one. It's a round arch one, my preferred midget. Yes, it's got the, uh, what, the, the 1275 CCA series engine in this yeah, one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just, you know, still got the chrome bumper, elegance. Yeah. A bit more of the drivable A series engine. Lovely condition. There's a handful of midgets uh, up for sale on this, uh, in this auction, so uh, well worth considering. I want to look at this Triumph Stag. Again, this has also had a lot of work done to it. Um, it's an auto. Um, it's got a curious thing where they've, he's updated the gauges inside. It's got some digital gauge pack with it, um, which makes it a little bit unusual. Um, but, you know, if that doesn't dissuade you, then I think this is a really clean example. It's got the factory hard top. And again, the guide price is quite sensible because, you know, stags are getting rarer in nice condition, certainly, yeah. which that drives the prices up. And um, I think this one is definitely worth a punt, but... Um, Yes, I, I, I very much wanted to, to highlight this one. Um, another red British beauty for me. Yeah, this is nice. 2001 Carnival Red X308 XJR. This is one of two X308 XJRs in the sale. The other one has got a no reserve, but it is a um, Cat D with an engine light on. This one's got a bit more paperwork to support it, and it's got a two and a half to three and a half guide price. The engine light would worry me, to be honest. But I think you probably better off going for this well, one. Well, I mean, probably, although having said that, the engine light could just be a coil pack or something, well, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I've driven plenty of Jags for long, take, long many miles. With pays your money, on, it takes your yeah. choice, right? But I, again, these are just super rare now. Um, and you know, if you can get one now at a sensible price, it's well worth spending the money yeah. to uh, get it into and fine They're a quick fashion. car, aren't they, by modern standards? Even. 370 horsepower, yeah. what, 0 to 60 in five and a half seconds, yeah. something like that. It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely car. And this being the 2001 model year, it's got the newer wheels, which yeah. I personally love these, uh, these wheels. But uh, anyway, there's an early Mazda MX-5 here, 1990. Again, unusual to find a standard one. Yes. And, um, you know, the NA, the NA is just modified all over the place, isn't it? And this one's even got the original wheels and everything. And white's unusual for these, and, um, you know, increasingly so now. So, you know, with a bit of a polish up, this one would, would stand out. And I mean, it probably if the rear number plate's anything wheels. to go by, it's an official UK car rather than a, an imported uh, yeah. Unos or Miata. Yeah. So, um, so that's well worth it. There's a couple more British delights I wanted to show. It's ADO 16. Well, this Here. one's a 1300, isn't it? Which is a sort of MG in disguise. It, exactly. So it's got the right engine. It's 1971. It's, there's not a huge amount of paperwork to support this one because it's part of a collection. Yeah. But um, it looks like it's had a nice respray. It's immaculate yeah. inside. The, the seats have been patched in a couple of places, but it's been done carefully and you know, it's, someone's obviously enjoyed it. It's had a few bits of maintenance to make it start and run and go just nicely. So listen, as a, as a sort of a, a rolling uh, sort of resto, yeah. classic car to enjoy straight away and just keep on top of the maintenance items. These are, um, these are great fun actually to drive. I, I always say it just to annoy Jeff Ruggles really. It's the thinking man's mini, isn't it? Yes, exactly. It's the, it's the, it's, it's a Gonis's best creation. Yes. <laughs> Controversial. Yeah. Yeah, All lots of mini down. owners can write yeah. in now, <laughs> but um, a little bit uh, further down the line in terms of British classic, the Rover yeah. 75. Yeah. BMW's now, this, version of what a Rover should look like. Now this is uh, a two owner from new car. Um, it's a local car. It was registered in Bournemouth. Uh, we're just down the road near Poole. Um, and this is, a SE model, five-speed manual. It's the two-liter K series. Yeah. Um, so you know, but again, in this sort of early generation spec, you know, pre the kind of cost, cost reduction cutting. stuff. Project drive. Project yes. drive that ripped all the character and the quality out of them. Yeah, it did uh, kill the quality actually. In, in early spec, these these were quite a nice. nice well, this has just got nice loads of paperwork to back up. It's eighty-eight thousand miles. Um, there's a, a facelifted Jaguar S-Type three-liter V6 in the sale um, and lots of people compared the 75 with the S-Type uh, over the years uh, and the 75 was always the one that was critically favoured for its uh, engineering obviously BMW threw the kitchen sink at this didn't they so yeah. well I remember myself writing a feature uh, comparing I think it was the X-Type and the 75 and we concluded the 75 was probably the better modern Jaguar well I, 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 th I think so I think you can tell BMW you know left no stone unturned when they were developing yeah. this car and uh, it's a pity it wasn't pretty uh, 
more revered. Um, yeah. when it it's unusual new. to find survivors that are, that are in good condition, isn't it? Because they have become cheap. And yeah, absolutely. Well, look, um, from this rover, there's another rover outside, which I really want to show because it's really one of my favourite rovers. So uh, let's, uh, let's head outside. Okay, Paul, my favourite of the rover RH generation, a 220 coupe. Now, this is the normally aspirated one rather yeah, than the two litre, yeah. much revered turbo model, but it has got the T-bar roof, which I'm yeah. very excited yeah. about. <laughs> Super rare. They just don't get these anymore. It's in a lovely Tahiti blue, 88,000 miles documented. The body's not so lovely, but we'll overlook that. Well, it, it definitely needs a bit of uh, TLC on the paintwork, but I don't think any of it's beyond repair. It is the, complete, though. The interior is absolutely spotless. Yeah, that's why you'll fall down, the trim, and it is all there. Exactly, and this being a 95 car, it's got the facelift, so it's got the chrome grille and yep. the airbag three-spoke steering wheel. Um, those lovely thick side bolstered seats. I don't know. The, the, these these were quite desirable back in the day they for were, me. Yeah. And, uh, There's a following for them now. It, yes. I think it stood around for quite a while. It looks like it's sat for a bit. So, yeah, yeah. Again, it needs need needs a needs a bit of love. But um, listen, I mean, you, you quite like a Saab, don't you? We had, we had a Saab 900 convertible yeah, sort of for a little while. Bittersweet so. memories of our 900 turbo. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping this one's in better condition. But yeah. uh, yeah. I did have a bit of a poke around this one on the sly, and it's uh, it's all there. Yeah, it's all it's all complete. It's uh, part of a collection sale that they've got here. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's uh, complete inside, which is where you fall down with these Saabs, because um, right. obviously Saab haven't made a car for a long time. Uh, you can't get a lot of the trim, like the, the glove box trim tends to warp and break, and everything's in this car, and it's all there, and it's decent as well. The seats are presentable, so that, you know, it's a good place to start with. Um, it's a two-litre turbo, 158,000 miles, which is not warranted, but, I mean, yeah. that's pretty much going to be genuine, right? So, yeah, yeah um, I think so, yeah. But, uh, uh, it looks yeah. like it's been used frequently as well, more, you know, relatively recently. I know you were sniffing around the uh, MGF here. Yeah, it's got I know, it's a bit of a guilty, bit of guilty secret, isn't it? I do like an MGF, <laughs> as you know. Uh, I, I can see the potential in this. If you get it cheap enough, it's no reserve, you know. They don't rust like a, an MX-5. Uh, buy it, put a new radiator in it, new coolant pipes, and, you know, it'll probably be absolutely fine in it. And a good MGF drives really well. All the bits on these are readily available, right? Oh, so yeah. that's the point. So getting this All back up bits. to proper spec would be quite easy. Yeah, um, and you've got a hard top with this one as well. Exactly. So again, that's something to, to look at. This uh, three litre V6 Jaguar S type is a 2002 facelift model. So it's got the new grille, new style wheels and improved interior. Selling for no reserve. It's a little bit, uh, needs a little love. Yeah, it but, again, it looks like it's been sat for a while. The discs are a bit but, rusty. You but you know, you could do a lot worse, right? Parts so, are cheap for these Jaguars. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's just so many cool cars uh, here. We could sort of go on all day. Um, look, this a, is an underrated car. Well, this one, yeah, the, yeah. the es Escort Cabriolet. Again, the Mark V was obviously much derided when it first came yeah, out, but, but by the time one. we get to this one. Yeah, you got the ZTEC engines in these. I remember having one of these on Presto back in the day and thinking, actually, it drove all right. Two litre, 130 horsepower, and you know. Yep. And now they've got a classic sort of status. And look, like a guy price of 1,000 to 1,500 quid. So if you wanted a fairly modern yeah. summer classic, you well, couldn't go wrong. They've got a good roof because they're made by Carmen. They basically put the same roof on it as the Golf. Yeah, so it's really decent. But I mean, look, there's a Vauxhall Royale over there that we should yeah. uh, really go and have a look at at some point. There's, a, there's the XJ other 40. 308 XJR yeah. that uh, I mentioned earlier. And there's an XJ40. Yeah. It's got like 150,000 yeah. miles on the clock. And it's one of the early cars with the two-spoke steering yeah. wheel rather than the airbag model. But a really good I had a bit example. of a poke around it and it, it, it does look surprisingly straight for, for an early X, XJ40. So yeah, so look, look, just the variety, the quality is just superb at the Southwestern Vehicle Auction sale that's coming up on the 25th of April. So if you're able to get down to their uh, Dorset head office uh, from the 20th of April, you can come and see the lots in person. All the details are on the website and we'll put a link in the description for there. But in the meantime, tell us in the, just in the uh, comments which uh, car you'd perhaps like to bid on, which one your favourite, which one was your car of the sale. And uh, in the meantime, if you do have a bid, good luck. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.